and you know that's Holland Fulton. Mm -hmm. yes. That's who that uh, school board building is named after, by the lawsuit. Now, by the time the ruling came down, his child was out of school. Mm -hmm. And from what my understood, some citizens out of West Palm Beach, Miss uh, with the Urban League, mm -hmm. What's her name? Ms. She's Bowie. deceased, Miss Bowie. Mm -hmm. Apparently, they were trying to get somebody to choose to go. They used integration to be the freedom of choice. Mm -hmm. And nobody was choosing to go. You know, I like Carver, they like Seacrest. And we really did get along in, in Seacrest and Carver when it was segregated. The schools, because of athleticism, because my husband played for Carver. Mm -hmm. Coach Pompey was very good friends to. Uh, Brandon Cooper at the time, so Delray always had a relationship. Now this was told to me, I'm 15 years old, I came home from a football game, I was elected Miss Carver tender, I was on the basketball team, I, I came home one day, my dad, I lived in Boynton, which meant Seacrest was my closest school. So that was the thinking. So a group of people came to my dad's house and literally <coughs> recruited me to go there, they were trying to look for somebody that they could send. So when I came home that day, that night, he just nonchalantly said, Bonnie, which is my nickname, I filled out some papers for you to go to Secret. And I was like, you did what? <laughs> and I was like, uh-uh. But the next day, I was sharing with Miss Hudson, when everybody at the school found out, it was like, oh my God, you should. You should go. You would be good and that kind of thing. So I took it as a mission. Mm -hmm. uh, a few days later, I got a formal letter. And the God knows I wished I had saved that letter. But that would be his story. One of these days, I might run across it. Officially assigning me to Seacrest. Now, also there was an article in the paper came about. But what I found out later is that they closed off the schools. Now here I am, just a 15 year old girl going to school. My daddy escorted me. Oh they told me to report to school at 10 o'clock. They did not want me to come to school the same time everybody else came. Had a conversation with Mr. Fulton, who was the principal at the time. And that was where the Fulton Holland come in. Wait, now, wait, wait. This, okay, Mr. Fulton was the principal was a at, at that time. Okay. At okay. that okay. time. A fact straight. At, right. Okay. And, <laughs> excellent principal, that's why. Everybody's experience is different. Uh -huh. And so I reported that day, and I met with the principal, and then I found out later, my daddy, you know who my daddy is, he had literally had a gun on him. <laughs> <laughs> and told the principal, and I'll tell this now because I can, <laughs> I'm sending my daughter up here, and I expect her to be protected. But what I did not know Mr. Fulton had prepared that student body for me. I'd like to introduce Paula Adams, who was a young lady who escorted me that day oh, no. on our campus. And we do see each other occasionally, <laughs> Paula. And I, I always like to hear her side of the story, too. She was part of student government. I always asked her, why did you volunteer? Because she shared some things, and she don't know what made her volunteer to be my escort. Now remember, when I came to school, they were already in school. But I could see her eyes. Because you know, if you ever went to Seacrest before it was rebuilt, the school had windows that were all the way down. So when I'm walking down, you know, we're looking at me, what you're looking at me for? <laughs> yes. And the principal wanted me to use the faculty restrooms. I said, I'm not using the faculty restroom. I'm going to use the restroom everybody else uses. Um, they wouldn't put me in a PE class, and those of you who know me, very athletic, you know, no, you're going to put me in a PE class, but for the first semester, because they feared that for some reason, the kids would beat me up. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> it wasn't what everybody thought. And I think that's why I fight so much, you know how I am in the community, mm -hmm. to understand that the standards we had, and see, I disagree with that about being in fear. When I went to Seacrest, they had old books too. And I felt the school system didn't do anybody any good. Uh -huh. Because their equipment in the science room was not the best equipment. Uh -huh. Now we may have gotten 
secondhand books. I don't know. But the books weren't that much better over at Seacrest. The chairs weren't that much better. Mm -hmm. And I was the only, I know, that's what I'm saying. I spent three years at Seacrest. And I learned so much, good, bad, and ugly in every race. And what has happened to us, we forgot our own goodness. Because we had such good teachers. We had uh, fanfare. And mm -hmm. We were ashamed. We, we didn't want white folks to know how good we really were. Then what started on me, I'm like, I'm smart than a lot of these kids. Well, that's what I learned at the <laughs> time. <that's laughs> what I'm saying. Is that but we were brainwashed to believe yes. Yes. that all mm -hmm. the white people were smarter than yes. mm -hmm. yes. That all the white kids did the good thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, these kids smoking. Mm -hmm. You get caught with a cigarette in the car. Mm -hmm. What was going to happen to you? <laughs> we dressed to go to school. And these kids were wearing flip-flops and... But you know, there so, are a lot of people who think that that influence, yes. the smoking and the flip flops, is what influenced black kids, and that was a, that was a negative thing. It, you're yeah. right, because what happens because of the historical brainwashing, mm -hmm. we believe that if it came out of white person's mouth, it, it was, was to be believed. Mm -hmm. It was to be believed. Mm -hmm. Ice is colder. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, and 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 it's just. I open it, and some of the my classmates are people we all know. Former governor, I mean, a mayor, mm -hmm. uh, the school board attorney, the sheriff, a Paula, who grew up. She's still married to her high school sweetheart. And when we had forty years, she happened to call the Sun Sentinel mm -hmm. and ask the Sun Sentinel whatever happened to Yvonne Lee. Mm -hmm. And they made two phone calls because, you know, I never mm -hmm. went anywhere. Mm -hmm. I stayed right here mm -hmm. and continued to pass the message. Mm -hmm. What I learned over there those three years. Now, remember, I gave up a lot. Mm -hmm. Leaving Carver, I love that school. Mm -hmm. And I don't think people realize, and I'm telling you guys, there were prominent black people in this community who felt that they, you would be better off sitting next to white people. Yeah. And that's the truth. Yeah. That is the truth. And they downplayed our school, mm -hmm. downplayed our teachers, downplayed mm -hmm. a lot of things that we did. And then now it's taken us all this time, like you're talking 54 years later, mm -hmm. for us to realize mm -hmm. that it's not true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That we were not getting an inferior education. Right. Oh, no, not at all. Now, yes, there are places by law we could not go. Mm -hmm. That was the law of the land. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But as far as, and I will never ever buy into fact that it was inferior. Mm -hmm. It was not. Mm -hmm. Because I'm a living witness. Mm -hmm. And when I stepped on that campus, and I tell people that, mm -hmm. I, I was already good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They didn't make me good. Mm -hmm. But I also warned people that I never had another black teacher past 10th grade. And what? Past 10th grade. Black From 10th grade, grade all through college and graduate school. So you got to be careful about that. And just like Victor alluded to the fact that all the black teachers weren't, didn't have your best interest at part either. Uh -huh. See, and we got to stop blinking it. Uh -huh. Uh, Whether somebody's good or bad. Uh -huh. Can I can I just yes. interrupt? One, yes, I don't sure. want anybody to think that I was saying that our schools were inferior. I was saying that it was there was an infer a fit inference or, or a a mm -hmm. thought that it was. Yeah. That's why they wouldn't right. come to our school. Right. But I know my right. education. Uh -huh. I put it on yeah. par with anybody else. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. As a result of, of, that. Of, of that. And I'll give you another example, experience. but I don't want to take every time and I'll let Paul talk something mm -hmm. because it was very interesting because <laughs> FAU uh, what, about 20 years ago, did a thing on race matters, and they brought us two together, uh -huh. and we had a conversation, uh -huh. and I learned some things that so, what they had to go through uh -huh. in order to prepare for me for coming, mm -hmm. and I think what happened with Victor knows, nobody oh, wanted to go, uh -huh. and they forced people to go. Mm -hmm. And when you force somebody to do something, you have a problem. Mm -hmm. And now my brother said something years ago that made so much sense. He said, why can't they just integrate one grade at a time? Kindergarten, then those kindergartners, 
come to first grade, grow up together. and in 12 uh -huh. years, you got it done. Uh -huh. Here it is, 54 years later, and we still <laughs> fighting this issue. Uh -huh. Because once we get together, and you understand who I am, and I understand who you are, because I always say, after you know me, and you don't like me, I'm okay with it. <laughs> but don't look at me, and, judge and me. judge me, mm -hmm. just by how I look. That's not fair. Yeah, because another incident we had, when we did get there, we couldn't have go, you know, like a run for the queen and king. Uh huh. Because our mm -hmm. second year there, they had a black queen and a black yeah, and I remember white that. queen. Mm -hmm. And Vincent, let me tell you something I did. Yeah. I told yeah. them. Yeah. Yes, they both of them. Yeah, they did and, that for and, years. Um, but and I, we, I went like to everything. Saying, like she was saying. Yeah. That it didn't matter that we was a lot smarter. Mm -hmm. Like I wouldn't. No, a student in school, mm -hmm. but she was. That's mm -hmm. what I want to say. I know, she yeah. Ended, quickly, she that I was voted most likely to succeed at Boca. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At about 500 kids. Mm -hmm. And I was fooled. I was fooled into believing the foolishness. And I went on to a predominantly white university in North Carolina. I was among, I was 300, among 300 out of 8,000 undergrads. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's a problem. Yeah. I wish I had gone to an HBCU. Yeah. Because, I because you know that. why? Somebody probably told you you're not going to get a good education there. Yes. Yep. I know it. It mm -hmm. happens now. I have a granddaughter at bethune Cookman, but I have about 15 different colleges where we've gone to. It's up to you. Yeah. But when I went to Seacrest, I was determined to be there. I went to everything they had. Whether it was a dance, whether it was a club meeting, I didn't care because I was not going to be afraid because I was like, I'm not afraid. Now, yes, I had the little cat calls because I could hear three times in those three years, nigga, mm -hmm. it's a nigga, the nigga, N word. Mm -hmm. But then you had people like, I wish I knew his name, the little white boy who had the courage to square dance with me mm -hmm. without <laughs> laughing. You know, or the, the fella who became my partner in science mm -hmm. and, and, and took nothing about it. Mm -hmm. And then I realized the teachers. I know now which teachers cared mm -hmm. and the ones who could, yeah. could stand mm -hmm. the fact that you were in that class. Mm -hmm. So kids know, and I always remember that, and that's why it's important that you get to know who you're dealing with. Because the devil come in all colors. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. Okay? And I, I, I feel for that because my yes. sister, 10 years later, she was in that class with, when they merged the school and became Seacrest Atlantic. They never had a prom. That's when all the fights. And I, I lived that because my principal's yeah. sons were at Boca High, Mr. Bear. His boys were there when you guys were having all that trouble because his wife used to volunteer. They used to have parents that would be like sitting on the hallways to keep mm -hmm. the kids from riots, because they did, because Burke always shared about how they would have mm -hmm. niggas go home. They were riding on the, um, on the walls, and they tried to have it erased before the bus come from Delray. And you know that joke was we had coming from Delray was not <laughs> going to take that. Uh -huh. They just weren't going to do it. So I'm, I feel for them. But uh, I'll let Paula speak, but I just want to let you know in the dates where I graduated in 1964, and there were four of us who graduated out of that class, and all of us are still alive. Shirley Urban, her name was Shirley King, Nora Jean Coleman, Elma Bagley, Jeanette Sands, and myself. Because by that time, when Doug Davis and those came along, all of the black kids from Pointer now had to go to Seacrest. Mm -hmm. Because of the boundaries. Because mm -hmm. my sister, who was behind me, she wasn't allowed to go because they said it was full. So Brenda graduated from Carver, mm -hmm. who she was a year behind me, class 65. Mm -hmm. Well, I, we were in the class of 64. And, you know, I'd be glad to sit down and tell anybody about yeah. the experience, but that's the, the yeah. timetable. I just have one question. Sure. Did you feel lonely that first year? You know why? No. Because, see, I, that's why I deal a lot in self-confidence. Mm -hmm. Kids have to feel good about